Returning to our story, Steve Trotter's pendulum swing stunt off the Tampa Skyway Bridge has gone horribly wrong. Five people have slammed into the choppy waters of Tampa Bay. It's not about thrill-seeking anymore. It's about survival. Here again, Bob McEwen. We were cranking, man. We were, we were hauling. We were going fast, very, very fast. One, two, three, go! In fact, way too fast. As the five daredevils leap off the Skyway Bridge, the steel lifeline strains to support their total weight of 900 pounds. But in seconds, approaching 80 miles an hour, the force on that cable is now closer to a ton and more than the steel can stand. It snaps. The jumpers are catapulted down towards the bay, falling about seven stories. Just moments earlier, first-timer Kenny Bunker had pondered that very possibility. I said to myself, what's the worst that could happen? The cable breaks, I hit the water? That's not so bad, it's not rocks, it's water. Actually slamming into the water so fast from so high can be just like hitting solid ground. Next thing you know, instead of orchestrated perfectly smooth, it was just a jumbled mass like of arms. I mean, it was just, all you saw was doo -doo -doo -doo, arms and legs. After hurtling almost 20 stories, the jumpers smash into one another and then into Tampa Bay. We slam that water. And it sounds like it's a ton of bricks slamming the water. It's like hitting cement. Get on over there. Get on over there. Even stunned by the impact, Trotter is horrified by what he sees. Two friends are face down in the water. Neither is moving. I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, my friends are dead, my friends are dead. I, I don't believe this is happening to me. You know, I was just uh, holding my cross the whole time, praying to God, you know, just please don't let this happen. I, how could I do this? Ironically, the jumpers' determined efforts to evade the authorities are now working against them. There's no one here to help. And if the unthinkable happened and the Which cable did. snapped was there a backup system is that something you thought about putting it in no because i didn't think that anything was going to happen so at a time when medical personnel are desperately needed there is no doctor and no waiting ambulance the only boats in the area belong to the camera crew and to friends of the jumpers trotter and his team will have to save themselves keep breathing but by now the police know what's happened Someone has called 911, and the jump was also captured by a security camera. More than 50 rescue workers respond. But it's not enough warning to help the jumpers. They have inadvertently put severe pressure on local emergency service. If you have 55 rescue personnel tied up on this call, they can't answer other calls. They're busy. David G. is with the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Department. When bartenders jump off the Skyway Bridge, he gets the call. Lieutenant G is astonished that five lives were riding on an untested steel cable, no thicker than your little finger. There were no professional stunt people. There were no mathematicians, no physicists uh, in the group at all. Keep breathing! In the seconds after impact, only rookie jumper Kenny Bunker is still alert. Get that boat! I wasn't even dazed in the slightest. I was completely coherent. I was up. But Jeff Sargent and Lori Martin the woman who was unusually quiet, are both unconscious and not breathing. So as soon as my head came above water, Lori and Sarge were both face down, arms out. So I rolled him on his back and Lori on her back. Seeing my two friends unconscious, not breathing, we wanted to get those guys out of the water as fast as we could. Bunker resuscitates Sergeant, who begins to breathe on his own, though he's still unconscious. But more than a minute after impact, Lori Martin is not breathing and the four-foot waves are making everything even worse. Now, the strong current and rough water threaten to drown the jumpers. The people in the camera boat, untrained in rescue techniques, are forced to turn away and try again. Time is running out. It seemed like it took a day for the rescue boat to come get us, and they had to jockey the boat in a position where they could intercept us and, and pick us up in the water. And that was, it was sickening drifting. In an effort to save Martin, teammate Glenn Rahm tries to breathe for her, blowing air into her lungs. I look over at her, and to see a blue face on such a sweet little girl, eyes wide open, I mean wide open like she was dead. Desperate, Rahm calls to her by her nickname. Don't do this to me! Come on, Lush! Come on! Come on, come on, baby! 
I started pounding on her chest, even with my sore arm and shoulder, started giving her CPR. And Rom's attempts to save her are disguising just how badly he's hurt himself. When I landed, landed on my shoulder and my neck, breaking my shoulder and my neck. Were you aware at that time of the extent of your own injuries? No, I wasn't. I thought, I knew I hurt my shoulder because it felt like a shoulder injury when you broke your neck down here. Nearly two minutes after the accident, the camera boat finally pulls up next to the jumpers. The camera is still rolling. Come on, cameraman, somebody help me. Martin is hoisted into the boat first, still not breathing. And now Rom is in severe pain. He goes to help me out, like grabbing this arm, and I'm just like, oh, don't do it. And I just flopped over on the boat into the bottom of the boat like a dead fish and just lay there. Just get me, get me to the emergency room. The boat sets its course to a nearby marina. Lori Martin has not yet taken a breath. Hey, hey can somebody get a pulse on her? I can't do it. I'm holding her head. But racing towards shore, high waves crash against the boat. Jet, slow down. Slow down, Tom. Slow down. And with no medical help on board, Glenn Rahm's broken neck is undiagnosed and in danger of getting much worse. How difficult was that ride back in seas that were pretty substantial? It was really bumpy, and every bump hurt. Unbelievable, the pain. Just unbelievable. But in the front of the boat, Laurie Martin is finally showing signs of life. She's going. She's breathing. I'll get her going. I'll save her. She's going to die. When you're saying to her in the boat, you're not going to die, Laura, you're not going to die on my watch, was it occurring to you that she might? Yes. I couldn't see her dying doing a stunt that I talked her into almost doing. Like, Laura, it's totally a safe stunt. But what about Steve Trotter, the man behind the stunt? His bravado apparently has been silenced by broken ribs and a bruised lung. There were five victims, four of which we actually had contact with. When we Ambulances raced the injured to the hospital 10 miles away. When they arrive, four trauma teams treat the jumpers. Lori Martin has managed to survive, though she too has suffered a broken neck. She won't do interviews, but she told Dateline this stunt was her last. But amazingly, she's the only one to say that. Jeff Sargent, unconscious after impact, escaped with just bruised ribs and sore muscles. He says he'll jump again. And so does Kenny Bunker, who walked away without a scratch. You'd do it again? I wouldn't jump off Tampa. I had a bad feeling about that bridge. Yeah. You'd jump off another bridge? I might take 97 off. I think I'll do it again. So it may be no surprise that Steve Trotter is already planning his next jump. It'll be a very organized stunt. It's not going to be illegal. It's going to be very high. and It's going to be out of this world. I'll put it that way. Out of this world. And even Glenn Rom, who, like Laurie Martin, came within millimeters of paralysis and who's still wearing a neck brace bolted to his skull, will promise only no more bridges. I'm not saying that I would never do another stunt again, but I won't ever jump off the Tampa Skyway. I won't ever jump, ever jump off a bridge. I'll never do another pendulum swing again. It's time for me to grow up. Though Trotter and his friends survived the bungled stunt, their problems are far from over. The four hospitalized survivors ran up combined medical bills of $70,000. Only Lori Martin had health insurance, and county officials say they want the group to help pay for the rescue.